a little bit about Dilla Dog's aesthetics and his techniques. So he's really known for the chop. Um, and he took, you know, he was like the next evolution of Pete Rock, right? Like, so Pete Rock was like the master of the chop and Jay Dilla took this to a whole new level. Um, <clears throat> and he really advanced like his chopping. And um, what Dilla did that made him kind of notable was he was looking for like weird melodies and different melodies. So he chopped up rock records, you know, soul records, but he was just, he would just do different stuff. I mean, he was just really different. He had his own unique style, his unique sound. Um, and he was really all genre with his samples. So when everybody was looking at funk and soul stuff, um, Dilla was like, he would, he, I don't know. He would like, if you listen to donuts and you listen to the sample source material from that, it's just, bizarre <laughs> uh just weird records and he just he made it work you know which was kind of amazing one of the things he's really known for is he he rarely used quantization so we're gonna watch a a video uh, uh, a vox video with the homie radar ellis where the, you know he talks about how dilla humanized the mpc so if you remember quantization is when it basically what's when you hit the pads as you're recording a, um, you know, a sequence uh, and programming, um, it snaps it to a grid. So everything sounds, you know, cold and on, on beat. It's really on time. Well, Jay Dilla was actually really known in an era from when everybody kept quantization on. Everything was quantized. So everything was snapped to a grid. Everything was like perfect timing. Dilla turned that shit off. And so we're going to watch um, this Vox video in a few minutes here where um, you see, you can actually see how, how loose you know what I'm saying? His programming was like it was on beat, but off beat. You know what I'm saying? Like um, he had a really incredible swing. And this is what Q-Tip noticed. And this is why, you know, um, Questlove as a drummer who was trying to play super on time, like a drum machine for some of the Roots records to get them hip hop placement, um, you know, really like actually was influenced by how Jay Dilla played drums on a on an MPC, but yeah, he really you know had this loose human sort of feel to his programming that you know no one at the time really had. Um, he had several, just like Pete Rock, some sig uh, uh, signature drum sounds. Like he you know made dr you know he had like I don't know. I mean, he used a lot of different drums, but he had probably like three different drum sounds that if I hear him, I know it's a Jay Dilla snare. And I'm talking about snares. Um, however, he EQ'd them, layered them, whatever. It was like a signature Dilla sound. And I hear y'all out there using them. <laughs> um, he was really known for uh, creating a, a really rich texture, um, particularly with how he applied low pass filters to his drum. Uh, kicks, so his, his, you know, his, he made those drum kicks sound like, versus, so he rolled off a lot of the highs and left just like that thud in there, and he also did a lot of the same stuff for his, for his bass lines, but uh, yeah, a lot of people are like, yo, he's the, you know, John Coltrane or Hendrix of, of beat making. Like he really, um, and what I mean by that is like Train and, and Hendrix, you know, made noise musical. Um, you know, Jimi Hendrix made noise from the, the um, electric guitar be music. You know what I'm saying? Coltrane did it with the sax and, dil and, and, and influencing people in so many ways. Um, and that's what Dilla did too. You know, he kind of the beat making in the, in the, specifically in the mid, late '90s, like specifically late '90s, early 2000s. So he had two primary instruments of of choice uh, that he's known for. Uh, first off, the Akai MPC 3000. Um, this came out in 1994. So this is Akai MPC 3000, uh, engineered by Roger Lynn. Um, and, you know, Dilla just got into every, like, he mastered his machine. So, unlike a lot of people, um, he, like, knew every nook, cranny, every bit of this machine. And he really mastered it. So, he was, like, the, the, the god of the, the, the 3000. 
It's a very sought after uh, sampler, sequencer. I'd love to have one just because it had a real signature uh, sort of sound to it. You could really, you know, just like the SP-1200, the EMU SP-1200, and all drum, drum, drum machines uh, or samplers have as a unique sound, how the, you know, all of the, um, uh, the digital to uh, analog converters, analog to digital converters, all the, all the patches that they use, everything, um, you know, have a unique sound to it. And then later on in his career, probably like a early, mid 2000s, um, he really started using the, uh, the, the Mini Moog Voyager um, to do his bass lines. So he started using a synth to do his bass lines. Um, so we can see, you know, uh, you know, his mom, Ma Dukes, uh, with both of his, his, uh, his, his Moog and his MP3 um, 3000. I can't remember if they're in the uh, Smithsonian um, or they're in some museum um, shit. That is pretty pretty important. I can't just remember off the top of my head, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll I'll paste it in with some text title uh, here. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna watch this video. Uh, it's a it's a video uh, called "How Jay Dilla uh, Humanized the MPC 3000." It features an interview and um, you know technique deconstruction with Radar Ellis. Radar um, is a beat maker. MC, super dope, cool dude uh, out of Boston. He actually teaches at the Berkeley School of Music. And I believe he had like a Dilla ensemble there. He teaches their turntablism, scratching classes there. A very cool, cool dude. And, and, and he knows his shit. So we're gonna press play on this, how Jay Dilla humanized his MP3000. And then we'll just talk through some of those beats. Um, you know, but uh, Radar does a pretty good job of you know, uh, showing you how he did some of the things that he did, creating his texture, how he did some of his loose programming, all that stuff. <laughs> 